Hello everyone and welcome back. So let's try out another example with Impulse. This time though, I'm going to make you do it on your own. So what do we have here? Well, we have the wheels of a car, the 1500 kilogram car, and they generate a traction force F. And it's described by this graph. And we also know the speed of the car when T is equal to six seconds if the car starts from rest. So how are you gonna do this? Well, first draw a momentum and impulse diagram. See how it changes. And apply the principle of impulse and momentum to determine the speed. And huh, some sort of diagram. Did we ever talk about or mention those? Hmm, well, that's for you to figure out. So, as always, I'm going to give you a few seconds of my time and a few minutes of yours to try out this problem. And then come back and see how you did. So, three, two, one, and we're back. Okay, so with that in mind, let us continue. First things we gotta do, an impulse momentum diagram. First off, momentum is zero. Afterwards, momentum is something else. And in between that time, we have all these things acting on it. Is the normal force gonna do anything? Is the weight gonna do anything? Is the friction gonna do anything? Well, you'll have to figure that out. My money's on the friction being the important part here, the frictional force from the tires. Who knows, maybe I'm wrong though. Now, it says right here that the impulse caused by the weight and the normal force can be canceled. And you might want to be wondering why. Well, it's because they are equal and opposite in direction. There is no force going down. I don't have any momentum in those directions, either up or down. And so they're gonna be equal to each other. And so the impulse caused by either of these things is going to cancel out. So in the previous example as well, it's not that they don't have an impulse, it's just that a lot of times, compared to the overall motion, the impulse they apply is negligible. Negligible. Especially since we're usually talking about very small time frames. Okay. Now, you know what the initial velocity is? That's gonna be zero. We're trying to figure out what the final velocity is gonna be. And also, luckily, we know what the force is as a function of time. Now that force doesn't have a nice set equation that you could definitely make one. So all you have to do is you have to take the area under this shape. And most times with shapes like this, you can break it down into a set of triangles and squares. So that would be a square that's four times six right there. And this one right here would be a, a triangle with a base of two, a height of six, so one half, two times six. Okay. So that's looking pretty good there. There's the one half, six times two. There's the six times four right there. And what we get is our initial momentum is zero and we can finally then solve for our final velocity, which will come out to be 20 meters per second. 20 meters per second. So that is it for that one, yes. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you. It's a fun little equation, I quite like it. Um, and interestingly enough, your assessment, actually I won't, I won't give it away. No, 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 I won't give it away, I won't give it away. There, there's some fun secrets here that this, this could be connected to certain questions you'll see. But I'll, I'll leave it at that. So if you've watched this video, a little extra help for you. <laughs> Well, you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.